So uh, DQ Guru creates, uh, if you look down the left side, has a, a, a very Windows-like organization. I've created a folder called Demonstration Folder within my current projects where I'm just creating things. And I have a home phone cleansing that I use for uh, uh, cleaning up some, some no numbers. Uh, but I'm also going to create a new project today that's going to be a deduping project. And we're just going to clean up customers. So again, uh, if you've seen any of the other demos, you'll know that I have to point to whatever database I'm going to go against. In this case, I am uh, uh, have a demonstration database running on this, uh, on this Mac. It's a Postgres database. And inside of, uh, of that, I have uh, some sample data that I've actually created um, using uh, the DQ Guru build example data. So I'm going to use this dedupe demo table that I've created as my input file for deduping. And uh, I'm just going to drop it back into uh, Postgres. Uh, and I have to create what's called a match pool. This is effectively uh, DQ Guru's way of, of um, you know, managing the matches. So it creates a match pool. So I have to create a table for that. So that's how we actually set up a, 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 a deduping project. Uh, again, to generate that table, it creates the SQL and goes and runs it for me. So now I, I have a deduping project called Cleanup Customers. And it's very similar. The format's very similar. We have transformations. We can run the match engine. We can validate our matches and then clean it up. There's one little trick in here that we won't spend a lot of time on here, uh, but there's what's called merge rules. One of the beauty, uh, beautiful things about a DQ Guru is if I'm cleaning up, say, a self-contained system and I'm cleaning up customers, typically those customers relate to things like sales activity or order entries or the like via their customer ID. And in a relational database, the, that ID is going to be unique. So I can never match on that. But if I'm matching on things like last name and first name or social security number, whatever I've got, what I want to do is for where I, I found duplicate customers, I want to merge together any of their related transactions and other tables. And the merge rules will do that for you. Uh, since this is a very simple example, I can't show that to you right now, but do play with it and try it out. It's a very unique and powerful thing. So again, I'm going to create what we call a transformation, which is a standard term. But in this case, what I'm saying or specifying is not really a transformation. It's what are the things, uh, what are the columns in that table that I want to look at for deduping? So you know, I'm, what I'm going to say is if the first name, the last name, the address, the home phone, and the cell phone are all the same, then that's, a, that's going to be a duplicate. So if on these five columns or fields, two records have the same value, I'm going to consider them duplicates. Now, that's not always the best thing to do. And we might want to do some work with that data. So for an example, what I'm going to do is, you know, first names, it's not all that unusual for people to uh, write their name out in all lowercase or in all uppercase. Um, to put uh, different spellings in uh, to do things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try and strip away some of this extraneous data so that I have a very consistent first name that I can check against. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that first name to uppercase. So I'm going to put every character into uppercase. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called the retain characters. And I'm just going to move some more space here so we can have a look at this. And what retain characters says is for that data, only retain what I've defined in this, in this input field. This is called a regular expression. It says give me everything from A to Z. So I've converted it to uppercase. I've gotten rid of everything else. So if I had a scenario where I had John all in lowercase and John with J capitalized, that would, uh, this would clean it up so it would be identical in both cases. Uh, where it's probably more uh, useful is where people have last names like uh, uh, Delabont, where it's D apostrophe or someone may not have even put the apostrophe in. By doing this kind of transformation, we make it consistent so we can actually match on that. And I'm just going to put that in my transformation uh, results. We'll hide that away. 
and you know for uh, time's sake I would probably do the same thing with the last name I would do something similar with the address um, and I would do some similar stuff with the home phone number and the cell phone number because the format's not entirely clean there but for timing sake we'll just do the one so with every transformation um, we have to give it a name so I'm just going to call it dedupe on name and phone and I may run out of space here so we'll just we're going to dedupe on name phone and address so I'll save that transformation and we're going to go to the match engine. Now in the match engine uh, you have to specify a, a log file and in this case I'm just going to put one in log.log because I'm not terribly creative and I can just go ahead and run that engine. So when you run the engine it will go and try and find matches and it will generate those matches into that table that was created when we set up the, the project. So I can do a couple of things here. I can now validate those matches or I can check the validation status. So what it said is on the name, the phone, and the address I had 38 records that matched. Now what that tells me is that there are 38 there. It doesn't tell me you know, whether 38 records all match to one or whether uh, 19 records had one duplicate each it doesn't tell you that. What you can do is you can go into what's called the validate matches. 